Hey guys, welcome back to the live stream tonight. We're talking about camper van conversion kits DIY. So these are kits that are on the shelf. You can go to the website, pick them up. They're either fully built kits. They include uh, wall systems, flooring, cabinets, stuff like that. Or they're individualized. So they have just kitchen galleys or cabinets, stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop on over to our little presentation. And this way I can walk you through what we're going to do. So we're going to go over full interior systems from these companies. And these are just a few that I picked that I've seen before. Ob obviously, if you guys have been following the stream, the Adventure Wagon kit is what we have in the van behind me. And then the ones below it are there are kits that are similar to that. Um, then down at the bottom, we have wall panels and or cabinets. Uh, and there might be some other items there. Uh, let me make one little correction here. Some of these kits, uh, I did want to include some sprinter stuff, just in case that's something you guys might be building out. Um, and then on the right side over here, this is the cheat sheet for you if you're going to be you're on your way to look for this stuff. So th key things you need to consider when you go through. Um, it might be obvious what you're buying, but unlike Ikea, you know, some of these kits, when you buy them, they may not include all the stuff you need to put it in your van. It might just be, you know, raw wood that's been cut out and shipped to you, and then you need to assemble it and stuff like that. And then throughout this whole stream, don't hesitate to ask questions. They can be completely off topic as long as they kind of go with vans. Um, off the topic of conversion kits. So if you guys have questions for other things that you're working on, put those in the chat. Happy to pause, answer those questions, and um, kind of go like that. But yeah, let's kick it off. We're going to go to Adventure Wagon. So Adventure Wagon, um, big fan of these guys. Again, none of the... Uh, let's, let's back up here. The disclaimer is... Not affiliated with any of these companies. Just awesome information for you guys that you can quickly access to work in your van. All right. So Adventure Wagon creates a whole interior system. And if you've seen anything with the installs that I've done in this van, um, it's essentially a kit that includes just about everything you need to get your van to become comfortable. I wouldn't say livable. Just uh, think about comfort, storage, uh, being able to tie things down. It's like a kind of like a core system. So the main selling point of their system is the A-frame. And this is a frame that gets riveted to the sheet metal inside your van. And then from that, uh, the L-track is used to hold down the interior panels that have been upholstered and insulated from Adventure Wagon. Uh, not only are these uh, upholstered panels have about an eighth inch uh, thick foil foam insulation on them, uh, the backing of them, but then you're gonna, and what's included is, if you can look in this picture here, you're gonna have uh, 3M Thinsulate insulation. And the insulation is So you're going to get two layers of this. So let's see here. This is, hey, Jamie. So this is an inch and a half. It's about an inch and a half. So about three and a half inches. If it's kind of compressed a little bit. But you're going to get two layers of this. So one panel. Um, it's pretty good stuff. All right. So, yeah, the A-frame. Um, so I have an engineering background. That's where I graduated from college from, did the whole, uh, like, textile industry, 
and uh, some automotive industry as well. And throughout those whole two jobs that I had um, out of college, safety was a, a huge thing. Uh, not only just for a business that I have injuries, but when we started to um, build or design or install things, uh, safety was just top of mind. Every month we had a safety meeting. Um, just about every other week we had a safety training with the guys in the shop that I managed. And, you know, safety is always top of mind. Well, when I got into van building, uh, after building my own van about three years ago, it, it was very apparent when I started to build my own van that there was a chance of getting into an accident and whatever I had built coming and flying at the back of my head. So when I started to build customer builds, you know, that uh, kind of worried me at first because you can make it as safe as you want to, but there's still that, you, you want something that's just a little bit better um, than your capabilities. And when I f- looked around, I couldn't find any type of internal system that was really, it became part of the van itself. And that's how I came upon Adventure Wagon. And this A-frame is just, it it sold me on it. Uh, it is a very, you know, pricey kit. I mean, the base core is about $16,500. And don't let that scare you too much because it is, it includes a lot. But safety was the biggest thing here because everything in this van has been riveted to the frame and then L-tracked to the A-frame itself. Extremely strong. Um, So a couple of bonus features that you're going to have with this system is the ability to do a lot, like a lot of modular upgrades. So if we come down to like the electrical system, you can have it pre-wired with the electrical system or you can have, you can opt out. So for my build, I opted out of that and I did that because, you know, once I take a hold of a van, it's going <laughs> to, we're going to have all kinds of stuff. Um, can you buy the A-frame alone? I don't know. I will tell you that uh, I needed to buy a uh, one of the thermoform plastic panels for the van. And let me get my face just a little bit bigger. There you go. The thermoform plastic for the van, I called them up and I said, hey, you know, can I just buy this outright? Because I, I already bought the kit. And they said, no problem. We'll ship it to you. But, uh, you know, we don't have time to upholster it if you're looking for it quickly. And I said, no problem. I can upholster it. So I'm assuming you may be able to buy the A-frame. But I think the problem with just buying the A-frame itself is th- the system is very intricate. So they've really mapped out the whole system. So uh, I kind of know where you're coming from, where if you got the system and then you kind of just took it over, made it your own wood panels and stuff like that, you could do that. But the time that it would take uh, to get all those panels the right size and kind of reverse engineer what they did, I think that your time will outweigh the the savings, if, if that makes sense. So... Typically, this system, is, not only is it safe, but it's it's really designed to uh, shorten the, the build time. Um, they say DIY, three to four days, you can install this system uh, by yourself. So, not sure if that was a, a good answer for you, but because um, uh, I actually attempted to do my own templated layout system going forward for the Ford Transit, but at the same time, it was just kind of that safety thing, you know, I can get this system, it's modular so that if a customer wanted to buy additional items, they could go to their website, they could go to products, and you see they have sleep systems, storage systems, and then accessories. So if we go to, uh, just kind of continuing, oh, perfect. <laughs> Excellent.
All right. So coming on down, the electro electrical system, uh, they give you a couple of like cigarette lighter ports and USB ports uh, with a little junction box, um, like a fuse panel that you can. Uh, it also includes their, their, their lighting system. So if I come down here, they come with six of these. Uh, we talked about this in yesterday's live stream. So this, these six lights. Uh, let's see here. Got my face for, face for a second. I'm going to pick up a link that we talked about yesterday. Okay, so those lights are called Lumicoin. RRE-global.com is who sells them. They're very difficult to find. This is the only person that, that, that I know has them that you can purchase them from. Uh, but these lights are really awesome because not only, only are they white, they're also red, they're also dimmable, and they have this aluminum ring that dissipates all the heat from the LED because sometimes really nice LEDs get, get pretty hot because they're pretty bright. Um, it's a nice warm tone. It's not that blue LED. Uh, they're made in Germany, so very high end. But that's where those, those come from. Yep, that's perfect, Jamie. So if you guys want to check this out, if you go to uh, here, let's see. Okay, this link that I'm putting in here. So this is the uh, the video that we did with Adventure Wagon. So we talked to Haley from Adventure Wagon. Uh, this is at the Ben Show, and then so I walk you through a completed van. This one's pretty much. You know, you can get the gist of it if you've seen past streams, but that video right there will help you um, get a bit better idea of what uh, they have, like a little cross section that they can show you. Um, so, in that video, Haley and I were inside the van, and we can, if you look in the top, they have like a cross section so you can see what it looks like on the inside. Um, and so this is just the core system. So if you bought the system, this is what it would look like when you're finished. So they don't they don't provide kitchen galleys, they don't provide stuff like that. But however, they do give you a kit if you opt in for the electrical system that ties in the lights, those ports that you see on the bottom, uh, the USB ports, uh, and some USB ports in the back. So technically, if you just wanted to do like a 12 volt fridge, um, and then like a uh, goal zero or uh, something like that. I mean, you could just, you'd be ready to go. And then the intention of this system in the van behind me is so that you can buy items like uh, these uh, Adventure Wagon, what are these things called? <laughs> mule bags, that's what they're called. So you can buy these mule bags. Um, you can have, they got six different colors. And they're soft bags. So if you guys have had experience in a van and you're wanting more storage, the reason you might ask, why would you go with a soft bag? So imagine you have a hard bag, a hard cabinet on one side of the bed, or one side of the van that goes really long. You still want more storage. because you, could, you can never get too much storage inside of a van. But when you go to sleep, if where your head is laying down at the end of the night, if you forget and you wake up and you don't have a soft bag above your head, you'll bust your head right into the hard cabinet. So that's why I recommend if people are building a van, do some hard cabinets along the whole entire side. Uh, my recommendation is the opposite side of your entry. So if you have a passenger sliding door, your long hard cabinets are going to be on the driver's side. And then you can add these mule bags on the soft, uh, on your, where your head sleeps at the end of the night, uh, at night. Um, and that way, if you wake up and you accidentally bump into it, you know, you're not going to bust your head open. Um, let me get this back together. Uh, 
Um, oh, let me finish up with them. There we go. Uh, the panels, so you can uh, look, you can get different types of uh, colors. So this is a Heather Gray. It's pretty, um, if you watch uh, Chad from Living the Van Life, that Heather Gray, from it's a marathon fabric. I believe that's what he has upholstered his van in. It's not an adventure wagon kit that he has, but if you watched his videos and you like that color uh, and type of fabric, it's a Heather Gray by Marathon. Um, something I thought was cool is this L track is the dual purpose. It holds the upholster panels in and it allows to mount L track accessories. For climate control, they've had, they have pre cut 3M Thinsulate. And again, understand this is extremely expensive for some people, but you really are, this is a really great value because they have, per, I mean, laser precision cut these pre-cut all of your uh, insulation, which is crazy. You just have to map it out. Um, and just, I mean, it's just step by step. Uh, so for example, if we go to one of our live streams, um, let's see here. It is this one. So in this live stream, I go through, uh, and I'm showing you how to put the insulation in. So there's two of these. So this first one is just the live build night. This is me. Um, I'll link this one. Because this one is... Uh, that is me organizing all the insulation panels and kind of explaining to you how they go in. So that saves you time. Plus it's up, you know, 3M uh, insulate is a high end product. Then this is where it gets fun. So beds, bags, and beyond. There's the soft bags. Uh, you can actually sleep four adults in here if you get the Moab beds. Um, but I'm just going to give you, you know, a, a preface again on sticker shock because the elevator bed, just the bed by itself is 3600 So you can imagine if you get two of those. Um, and again, uh, the mattress, same thing. It's $1,100 mattress. So, you know, if you're four, eight, you know, you're almost, almost 10,000 for a dual bed system with mattress that's custom fit to this system. The cool thing with custom fit is, you know, you don't have to worry about anything fitting or it blending style wise. I mean, it's all going to be pretty nice. And I know I sound like a fanboy, but uh, I'm an engineer. I put this system in. I could not believe how accurate the this steel in, that has been uh, cut out, or I think most of it's like bent and laser cut. But I mean, the amount of precision in this the A frame, uh, it really it really impressed me. I mean, it was. I mean, I almost want to say perfect. It was it was extremely extremely uh, well done. And then, uh, yeah, you get to send camp chairs now. <laughs> um, but the dual beds are pretty cool because uh, you can jack them all the way up to the roof. The way these beds work, um, I wish they had more videos on their YouTube channel. They, they have some pretty good videos for install, but uh, for as nice of stuff that they have, I, it'd be nice to have more videos on like everything that they do. So... I guess I'm doing one right now for them. Um, but the elevator bed, what's so cool, you see how they have these slits in it right here? So they always expand and contract. So uh, <laughs> I saw that. Um, so these things expand and contract so that the bed can go low, and then as the van tapers, the bed can 
go in. So, I mean, if you wanted to bring like mountain bikes, obviously, or like even like a motorcycle, you could put all the beds to the very top of the ceiling, load all your equipment in, go on your trip, you know, come back, reset the beds. Uh, yeah. So look at that. I mean, you can really make up the space. Uh, let's see what else before we move on. So I picked them because I mean, they really got their stuff together. They got mattresses, elevator beds, um, the bunks, uh, just simple cargo controls, tie down systems. Now any L track component, like even if you go on Amazon, it's going to work with this system. Uh, flatline Vanco makes a pull out tray. And then while we're talking about it, If we go to Flatline Vanco, so this is a different company. I don't have them linked, but I, I've talked about them before. The roof racks I install are from Flatline Vanco. Um, but if you go to over here on the right, there's a little tab. It's called Adventure Wagon Compatible Parts. And this is pretty cool. So you could go over here and save some money because this bed system is much cheaper and their mattress is much cheaper. Um, it's a little bit of a different style. So, and it's fixed. So you're not going to be, you can take it out, but you're not going to be taking it in and out as easily as the Moab bed. They have, uh, these bamboo cabinets that are compatible. The way that they work is they have these, uh, uh, brackets right here. And so this bracket will go up into the L track and then bolt the cabinet down. And the only uh, caveat to this is this profile, this angle right here is designed for a sprinter. Now, because they have the A-frame, it's extremely close to the same angle as the sprinter, but I've been told that it's not perfect. Um, but if you're really OCD and you had like a little gap here in the back, you could just get a piece of bamboo just and do a finishing cap on here to hide that little gap. You know, it kind of sounds like me, but uh, that's probably what I would do. And then down here they have uh, some other components. But they do have compatible products for Adventure Wagon kits, so it's not only this one company. Um, I didn't know they had roof racks. Yep, it's probably just for sprinters. Well, no, that's a... Uh, okay, they got transit. Cool. More options. More options is always good for vans. Um, let's see what else. And they have some accessories, but these are just other companies. Nothing special. All right. So the next company, I'm going to skip Zen Vans and Wayfarer, Fair, and I'm going to go straight to Infinity Vans because I think Infinity Vans is pretty comparable to Adventure Wagon. Just they have a different... Uh, they don't have like internal skeleton. What they have is, so we go to this kit. Uh, again, you know, very expensive. Um, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. Back up. Stay with me, guys. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta explain the most important part about Adventure Wagon. There we go. Okay, there's a background. Okay, so what's when I say you get really good value for your money with Adventure Wagon, it's because of this. Not only do you get the insulation to install on the walls that's pre-cut, you get the upholstered fabric with their kit, uh, you get the ceiling panels, you get the light system, you get uh, the electrical system, um, and they also include a max air fan. So that's a lot of... And they have the trim for all those these little nooks and crannies in the van. 
all these caps, uh, stuff like that. So your interior van is complete when you buy this kit. Um, so the max van and the insulation. Oh, and the sound deadening. They give you sound deadening material for the whole entire van. And, I mean, all that just in itself um, makes it, in my opinion, a really good value. Now, with that being said, I am with you guys right now. This is, man, we're really live because um, I saw this company on a, a YouTube video from Vanland. And the uh, what was supposed to be really cool about this was they this company they have like these uh wire channels i'm hoping they have a picture of this okay so check this out it's like a layered approach to the van so they don't have like the a-frame system but they have their own uh kind of locking wood system so like if you look right here it's kind of like these puzzle pieces and so you're, you know, you're using wood. I'm assuming it's, you know, like birch plywood or like uh, Baltic birch or something like that. Something like marine grade. Um, I don't know that. But they have, uh, they fit together like these little puzzle pieces, bolts, uh, probably screws in to the van. But they look wild like this because they, they cut out all the unused space to save weight. And then, so this is the internal panel. And then these colored ones are your, what they fit on top of this. The red one would lay on top of this white one. And supposedly, let's see if they have a picture of it. So do you see where they have these routed out lines? So these routed out lines are, play, are for you to actually run wire. So it's like a wire highway. And so you put the bolt, you put this up, you bolt it in, um, and then you have these openings where you can stuff insulations in. It also lowers the weight of the panel, um, and then these uh, routed out sides. I'd have to recommend to all these websites. You you got to have more pictures. If you have to think you have ten pictures, it's like selling a car. If you sell a car, you need like 40 pictures or 50 pictures. People want to see pictures. So <laughs> this is the only picture I'm trying to show you guys their product here. Um, but they have these places. I don't know how I feel about embedding wire into a wood panel, but I'm sure the concept seems pretty, pretty solid. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, from wiring vans, you always have to think of the worst thing to happen. So essentially, if a fuse doesn't blow and there's a short on a wire, that wire turns into a toaster oven. So if you ever looked inside of a toaster oven and you see that, that grid of wires, so just imagine that's what's happening in your like rubber or plastic-coated cable if it shorts. It's going to get so hot that it actually starts to melt. Now, technically, if you have it wired correctly, the fuse fuse will blow way before anything happens to the wire. But let's just say, you know, it's a DIY. Somebody missed a step, but the wire is embedded in wood. <laughs> just saying, you know, just be careful. Um, yeah, so it looks like Man, need more pictures. So that's a really good picture. That's good. Uh, so this is I must yeah this is what it looks like afterwards. So if you if you're okay with kind of like all these bolts, holes and stuff, um, yeah it's kind of a cool look. But the point of this video is, this is stuff you can buy, so you can go to this company and and purchase it um, without building it yourself but you can install it yourself yeah so it's, it's nice and clean very minimal um 
And that's one thing I want to bring up. If you can find, I'm sure they don't have this, but by looking at this picture, I think this is like a uh, Isotherm Cruise 85. When you're buying these pre-made kits, just think ahead if it's going to fit the components that you're, you desire. Because you might buy it and then, then you're kind of fabricating something and it won't look like it was made in it. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so that is Infinity Vans. So let's see what this kit includes. So it's going to include kitchen galley. Oh, you guys can't see that. Kitchen galley, bed system, dinette with table, power utility box, water utility box, and upper cabinets. Uh, so assuming power utility box and water utility boxes are going to be yeah, over the wheel well. Uh, I got some colors to choose from. Uh, the other thing I didn't mention is there is a... I'm, I'm assuming just as Adventure Wagon, there was a waiting period. I had to wait um, two or three months for the kit to get assembled. So depending on what they have in stock and ready. Uh, yeah, so that's Infinity Vans. Um, so next, let's go to Zen Vans. Uh, so I've been watching... YouTube tours, and that's how I came upon Zen Vans, and one of the owners said they were going to start making these kits. So this kit is the base cabinetry kit. So let's look at these pictures and see what that might entail. So I'm assuming you're getting this little galley. You're getting a, their thing is this kind of like curved bamboo style. Um, one thing that was odd, if you look at the roof, they just, they don't put insulation up here. If you look really closely, it's just covered. So I'm not sure, um, why they do that, but I've just seen it in a lot of their vans and they, and they mentioned that they don't do that. So not sure why. Um... Yeah, but I mean, if, hey, if you're in love with bamboo, this would be your van. Yeah, so I'm assuming it's the cabinets, the kitchen galley, and the bed system, and then the wall panels. Yeah, I love this this cabinet on the right. I mean, look at that, how complex. It's, got, you know, it's curved bamboo, and it's curved like a S. Awesome. And even if you're going a DIY route, like this will give you a lot of inspiration because you're seeing the L track is being used as a dual purpose, something to hold stuff down. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that battery box. Not bad. So let's see. About 18,000 for standard, so that's about the 144 Sprinter, and then we got 22 for the 170. Um, they're built to order. They have uh, sideways bed flares, passenger side gallery, trim packages. Okay, I don't see any. Okay, kitchen galley, upper cabinets, three bed panel system. So here's one thing that I was looking up. They have a one year warranty. So that is on our little list over here. Warranty, is that something that's included? Um, if they could do like just a ballpark 
like how long it takes to get one of these kits, that'd be better. That would fit towards my uh, off the shelf part of this video. <laughs> uh, okay. So one company that I've seen on YouTube that they do like day of installs is this Wayfair van company where I've seen them have a customer hop in, they get their van for the day and then they return it and it's already got uh, the system in it. So let's look at a Ford Transit. And so this is starts at 22,000. So they include a max air fan. Wait, oh, you add these. These are not included. No, I think these have to be included. The Wilford Van Kit. There you go. Okay. Yep, I've seen this before. So I've seen a video on this. Again, you know, it's you know it's hard to say if I'm in love with the style, which is probably no. Um, but you know, if you, if you want your van done in a day, um, this might be what to go with. Um, so they have some bump outs here that they're, I think they insulate those, just a minimal insulation. They got the upper cabinets and this stuff is extremely just you, very utilitarian. Um, not so high on style, but again, they can do your whole entire van in a day because I've seen it in a YouTube video. But yeah, so that is interesting contrast to the adventure wagon because that's kind of why I'm doing this. So you can see that, you know, you got different companies here and you get very different expectations on, on what type of uh, uh, kit you're going to get. All right, so those are full interior systems. Um, the next one I'm going to go to is a company that I've bought some components for. So I always like to say if I've bought something from a company because I can kind of vouch for if it's legit or not. Um, so that is Titan DIY kits. Again, there's no affiliation here, but I've bought stuff from them and it's worked out. Um, so Titan DIY kits, this is a division of Titan vans. So if you guys have seen Titan vans, if you guys want to check them out. So we toured one of their vans at the Ben show and I like Titan vans because it looks like they've got their build, uh, very systematized. And, but it looks like it's not, if that makes sense. So it looks kind of like a one-off build. Everything's very tight, but it is uh, standardized. So like their power system, power box is kind of standardized, that type of stuff. Their bed system is kind of standardized. Now, the one thing that kind of got me here, not saying it's bad because what I'm about to show you is their cabinetry. Um, and again, uh, kind of what I want to do with you guys watching here is kind of get like a temperature reading on what you guys are looking for DIY. So does DIY mean super basic? I'm just getting started or is DIY where I want a high finish, but I'd like to build it myself. So definitely put in the chat kind of where you guys are looking so if you're putting if your budget just type in budget if you're looking for high end just type in high end uh no judgment just trying to uh 
I have like thousands of hours <laughs> on the internet and just looking for parts. So I'd like to show you what you're looking for because uh, it's just all in my head. It'd be better to get it out, help you guys, than uh, keep it up there. Um, but if you're going more for the budget style, let's say you're just getting started and you want to go kind of nice and easy. You want to have some cabinets, but at the same time, you want to put them together yourself. Or you, maybe you want to paint them. So the cabinetry on Titan DI Vans is, uh, I, I have to use the word cheap because it, it's cheap, but sometimes that works for people's budgets. Uh, so for example, if you bought the cabinet, you know, it looks very decent. Um, but just understand that it is a kind of like a flat pack system. So kind of think of Ikea style purchase, but to my knowledge, the wood is higher quality. It's not like that fiberboard if you're, or like MDF type of thing. So it's actually, uh, I think it's Baltic birch. Let's see, let's see, yep. So it's CNC cut Baltic birch plywood. But it's, it is thin. Um, but I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, for, what is this? 400 bucks, you get a, a cabinet with all the hinges, gas struts. Um, it's always nice when they provide measurements so you can kind of anticipate what you're getting. Uh, don't, they don't, they also do open. So if you want open ones, maybe you want to put some bungee cords or something like that. That's cool. I gotta remember my, my, my head's in the video here. Um, Okay, we can make we can make me a little smaller. There we go. And see, they have a bed system. This one's this is getting up there in price, but this is one of those slide out like expandable systems, so that you can lay it out full and make more use. Now, because the one forty four sprinters they are pretty tight inside, so trying to make the best of it easily difficult. You're going to have to do maybe like a Murphy bed or something like that. Um, like this video, for example, the folding bed is something that seems to be a trend. Um, let's see here. Where am I? There we go. Okay, so they have cabinets. And they have a kitchen galley. But again... I have to say it's very thin, very thin structure, um, but it'll get you going, you know. It has the pump, the faucet, stuff like that. It's very simple, but I don't want you to translate this with this. It's not the same thing. Um, and then when we get to water... This is something, uh, I know I'm off topic, but I just want to show you this while we're here. So they, they do have water tanks. Uh, they do have the spray down nozzle. Uh, this is one of the best products, I think, in the whole van life uh, community that you could buy online. It's this rear spray down shower kit from them because it, it's, it comes with this really nice housing, on-off valve, super sleek, pull-out hose. You can... You can put two of these in your van. You put one at the sliding door and one at the back. Um, it just looks really nice because uh, the uh, RV. Uh, this type of stuff. I, ve I very much dislike this stuff. <laughs> Not saying you can put it on your van. Go for it, but. Plastic, just more plastic and plastic and plastic. Um, to me, is just asking to get broken. So this uh, this kit is just it's clean, stainless steel hose, looks sleek. No, it's very minimal. I like it. Um, what else do they have? The panels. So they do have somewhat of a panel system. And they just recently added these uh, metal, you know, I guess this is their version of the A-frame. But they did add these to assist in uh, the panels lining up in the van. Now, this stuff, um, 
They also offer pre-cut insulation. And these are all, this is just Sprinter right now. Um, they do have the panels for a Ford Transit van. But again, you know, take this with a grain of salt. It is just the wood panels. There's no bump outs cut out. There's no, nothing's been upholstered. You're just buying, you know, CNC cut wood. Now it, it is Baltic birch quarter inch, but remember it's unfinished. Um, but they do have those available. I uh, I thought this was a good idea, and then I kind of thought it's not. A paper template to cut out your own panels. Um, but I just wanted to show this if you guys might be into it. Uh, it's pretty expensive for just pre-cut out paper, but maybe if you really, really just want to cut out your own panels, then you could you could purchase this. Um, let's see, accessories. They have a little bit of l track accessories. And you can buy heaters from them. Uh, I, one thing that's really nice about Titan uh, DIY kits, uh, they are a, an American supplier of the American version Wabasto heater. And I've read a bunch of forums that if you buy the international versions, they're hard to get warrantied if anything breaks on them. Uh, but if you get the ones in the U.S. that happen to be, you know, oddly more expensive, that um, they can be warranted easier. That was just a uh, stream of thought. So if that helps you, cool. All right, if you guys... Um, so we got a comment here. If you guys are looking for help on a van or an actual van build by my company, I'm going to send you a link to my website because I just saw that in the chat. Uh, come on. So I won't answer that question here for like for a personal build, but you can so go to the website. I should have gave you the contact link. Here we go. Yep. So we'll start that conversation at this. So fill up the contact page. And in the message part, put your question that you're um, looking to get answered. And uh, yeah, we'll take it off of the live stream and we'll we'll go from there. All right, back to the live stream. And then you can also, hold on, I'll go back to the website. So on here, you can learn about me, where I'm located, all that stuff, where the shop is, what I do. It's all on the website. All right, back to the live stream. So, yeah, so Titan DIY kits, they've got a bu bunch of stuff, uh, as you guys can see. And you know, they're adding it more and more over time. So, like, for example, they had the wood panels, but they didn't have the uh, the structural assembly, assembly for the van. They just have that now. So next we'll go to Flare Space. Uh, so Flare Space is known for the bump out flares so you can sleep sideways. Uh, technically, in a Ford Transit, I'm six feet, and technically you have enough room to do that without bump outs. That's why some people do like the Ford Transit as well as the Ram Promaster. However, Flare Space got their name from doing the Spinner bump outs or uh, flare space. And what that is, is 
Um, let's see, shop. Trim, no, 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 flares. So let's say you have you want flares for your uh, Mercedes Sprinter. So th what this company does, <laughs> I feel I'm doing like, like commentary, like business commentary for all these companies' websites. Don't take a picture of a black van when you're trying to show off your bump out. You can't see it. Um, need contrast, white van. But... So what they do is they increase that kind of the living space. The 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 room, like in the front is going to give you more open feel. In the back, you're actually going to get that usable uh, leg room. And this is kind of a uh, of what it does. For example, um, So I don't know what the original one is, but they can give you up to 81 and a half inches of room. So 81 to 81 and a half. Increases room for when you're sleeping. But what they have now is if we go to shop, they have uh, bed systems. So interior bed systems. Uh, they have the mattress. They actually have sheets. If you have a Revel, they have a, a mattress as well. And then not only do they have that, but they got window covers. And then now they have, uh, oh, that's right. That's right. So they have teamed up with Titan Vans. <laughs> that's so funny. I clicked on that afterwards. Uh, so essentially these panels are Titan Van panels. That's kind of funny. Anyway, options. You got options. You can go to these companies and check this stuff out. Um, so flares, trim rings for the flares, bed systems, um, storage systems. Okay, I know why I picked them. So I picked them because we're getting into the, these categories down here to where this stuff is more uh, like a la carte, like it's individual things. So with flare space, you know, they got some, uh, these seat back organizers, stuff like this is really cool. And I think this is a storyteller. Yep. So you can kind of see a theme, industry theme here. You know, people are, Businesses are partnering with other businesses to kind of get stuff moved around. So this is the Storyteller logo, if they know it's on there or not. Um, so this bag system, it's probably made pretty pretty nice. But it hops on the back of a seat. Again, you can never get enough storage in a van. Um, but they have all these kind of organizers and stuff like that. And again, another company's, you know, showcased here, Owl Vans. You guys may have heard of Owl Vans. They do a lot of rear mounting systems, both for spare tires, for bikes, you know, rear ladders, um, stuff like that. So that's flare space. Let's see if there's anything else I want to show you. Yeah, nothing too, nothing too crazy. We'll move on. Um, next, we are looking at uh, let's see here. We are Van Lab. Okay, so I saw this company today. That's why I don't know much about them, but um, I'm trying to look like at the spectrum here. So I'm trying to find stuff that's really high end technical, you know, like rugged, you're going to go mountain bike, you know, in Moab, or you want to do like van life in a park by the lake type of thing. Just kind of like a, a spectrum of 
different designs. And I came across Van Lab, and it's a it's like super minimal, uh, like very clean. It it almost has like a uh, what am I thinking of? Not Norwegian. Some 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 t- some type of style like that. And it, so my opinion of this type of style, this is something that you could, uh, let me make my face smaller. This is something that, I'm going to move it. There we go. This is something that you could do to to a smaller van. So, like, say you have, like, a low roof van or you don't have, like, a Sprinter or Transit. Um, To me, this type of, uh, like, high-gloss birch or like maple wood like all wood it really makes the space bill uh brighter cleaner bigger yeah so i i kind of like that i'm a fan of this i think stuff like this is nicer than zen vans in just my opinion i mean these are so this is a company that gets it very nice, very clean photos. Really easy to understand what's offered. Wow. Look at that. I'm telling you guys, some people get communicating. That's, that's excellent. I'm going to watch that video after the live stream. But up here, um, so they got a kitchen, worktop, uh, the electric box. Uh, let's see here. That's a Ravati sink, so we know that fits in there. A little dual burner. Let's see if I can assembly. Here we go. Perfect. Ah, this is great. Yep, that's exactly what I thought. So these are very small vehicles. Like the, the Nissan NV200. Um, I mean, that <laughs> Nissan NV200 is so small, it has a CVT transmission. So, you know, that's like for very small engines. Uh, Chevy City Express. Uh, that's kind of like, uh, like a Ford. Um, I mean, not a Ford. Promaster City. It's kind of like what a City Express is, Chevy City Express. Then they got a Mercedes, and then they got a Ford Transit. Oh, man, let's check. Oh, coming soon. Yeah, the Transits are getting really popular. They're they're just now working on these uh, interior systems. Oh, these are all coming soon. The kits. Oh, okay, here we go. Small, get these medium sprinter and then large transit cargo so let's look at the medium sprinter let's see if yep so they got one for the medium sprinter yes for nine thousand bucks you get all of this huh where is the info there we go wow man that was a great video Okay, maybe it doesn't have the wall panel. So this is cool. This is really cool. Yeah, this is a great website. This is excellent. Including this kit, the cupboard, cabinet, bed, integrated wire loom, reviews, very nice. Wow. All right. That was a good one. All right, next. Let's get into some overlanding type territory. Uh, this is Trail Kitchens. Again, no affiliation. Just this stuff's what I look at. Um, so these guys have like these little 
uh, pods that are kind of put together. And I got another company to like them. That's just a solo operation. But like this kitchen pod, for example. So for 3000 bucks, you're going to get five gallon fresh, five gallon gray. Um, place for a fridge. Let's see if it tells you what fr compatible fridge. See, this is perfect. So this is what you want to look for. So these notes that I have for you over here. We're going to get to in a second. This is this is what I want all you guys to look at. Um, so, for example, you want to make sure kitchen galley, you know, what sink or fridge will fit. And so we know this is an Isotherm Cruise 49. Uh, it's got a little fold down sink. So pretty nice. You know, not my style, but hey, maybe you want something that looks like this and it's you just got your vibe. And let's see what else they got. So this is more of like a drawer style with the, the cooler comes out, kind of low profile. Again, to me, this stuff is good for like low roof vans. Uh, they even have like a cargo slide. Um, yeah, so not crazy, but just something I found. And then uh, let's move on down here to something that's kind of like them. We're going to skip ABC rig. That one's an important one as much as uh, Alpine Van Works is. But our caravan is kind of like that trail kitchens. Now, our caravan, this is a gentleman that built his own sprinter van with him and his daughter. And... People liked what he built so much that he actually created these two offerings uh, that are pre-built. So one is this uh, refrigerator cabinet kit right here. And my face is in the way. Um, and it's it's all the 8020s pre-cut. All the fasteners are included. So you buy this, it ships to you, and you assemble it. Um, so this company, uh, High Tech, uh, he farms it out to them. So they're the shop that's going to chop all this up, fulfill the order. This one right here. Um, and it's going to go in one of the vans. Uh, it fits an Isotherm Cruise 130 fridge. It has one, two, three, four drawers, and then a cabinet for the gray and fresh water. And it'll fit a 15 by 15 inch Rivati sink. Um, so that's really cool. Now, I got this kit, and just to give you some nice stuff about this company, one of the pieces of uh, 8020 was damaged. It was dented. Um, so I contacted them. They shipped me out, replaced my part right away, and it was just nice. I didn't have to, you know, deal with anything. It just got fixed. So, but this is cool. I mean, if you if you wanted something that's 8020, but you don't want to be the one cutting it and all that stuff. And so he, he's got a bunch of drawings, and then he actually has uh, two videos here that will show you how to put it together. This is what it looks like in his van. Um, uh, where is it? So that's, I don't know if you can you guys see that. Where's the gallery? Yeah. All right, so that's what it looks like in the van. Let's see what it, so he put, oh, come on.
Can you guys see that in the picture? So he used bamboo faces for everything. And it just looks really clean. It's a very clean black formica, matte black top. Looks really nice. Anyway, moving on. So those two were kind of the same. Um, we're going to get to ABC Rig. I really like ABC Rig. They are about the only ones that have a one-and-done floor system. So they have this. It is an insulated floor system. And it comes with their own... Uh, come on, look at these ends. It comes with their own, like, powder-coated steps. Everything is precision cut. And then this is what it looks like in the van. So it's a three-section piece. It's insulated. It's got the zip system. It's created from the zip sheathing system for a home. It's just been CNC cut to fit inside of a Ford Transit. Uh, the green is like a, like a waterproof material that has been... It's from zip. Uh, I was apprehensive about... Uh, this is what's in Thomas's van. I was apprehensive about installing the epoxy floor from the, the lawn seal floor on it because I didn't think it was going to stick to the uh, the waterproof membrane, but it was no problem. It stuck on there excellent. So it's got a step, and then when you're done, it just gives a nice, clean appearance. Um, yeah, so I, I've got a video where I have installed this floor. Uh, I did a live stream on it, if you guys want to see that. So this is this is uh, me doing commentary on installing the floor. Uh, so not only do they have the flooring system, but now if you are looking to do the interior of your van they now have interior systems they're similar to titan diy so they have pre-cut panels for the van they also have um upholster kits for like the ceiling panels and you know this is pretty good if you're okay with this type of uh I guess craftsmanship is the easiest way to say it. Um, I kind of like a little bit more detailed stuff, but I mean this is this is perfect if you're if you're in this um, you know budget. You want to kind of just go with like a basic cloth ceiling or upholstered ceiling. And there's nothing bad with it. It's just uh, lower complexity. Obviously, you're going to have like a more simple of a design. Uh, this is really cool. So they just came out with this. So this is a Transit 148 high roof overhead cabinets. And I actually like this. I may think about purchasing purchasing one of these. Um, I like the hinges that they use. I like how it's like a lay flat box. It's very easy to be shipped to you. Uh, we got three. We've got one big one, two small ones. And then this is something I'm really cool. I never thought of doing is it's kind of like a wallpaper or like a vinyl graphic on the inside. That I mean that's pretty cool. Um so yeah, there's there's all kinds of companies like this out there that you know, it's expensive stuff because it's it's ready to go in a sense there's just a little bit of assembly, but it can get your if you're kind of stuck in a rut and you're trying to get your build done, this is this is a way to help you get it done quicker. Uh they also have uh, like a rear utility box. So this is where you would put your um, you know, battery system and stuff like that. Oh, and it has optional cutout details. So if you wanted to have some venting or pass-throughs, I think that may be CNC'd already into the panel. Or maybe you request it. Something like that. Now remember, guys, you can always go with something simple like a goal zero system uh, to power your van. You don't have to do a whole entire wiring. 
Uh, so it just depends on what you're comfortable with. For example, that adventure wagon kit, really expensive, but they just had a goal zero system with a, like a Dometic, a cooler style fridge just to kind of get out there, go do the adventure. All right. So let's see, was there anything else I wanted to show you about these guys? Uh, they do have a roof rack. Some 80, 20 options, some, uh, window frame covers. So this is the 10 W uh, this, this is the 1033 window. So this is the slider. It's not the awning style. So the VW, I think it's vent window. And AW is awning window. So I have the CRL AW 1033s in the one behind me. Yep, there you go. See, slider. And let's see what else. Oh, nice. Okay. They've got a ABC rig transit floor pattern. Very cool. Nice. So yeah, if you didn't want to buy the floor system, you could cut you could buy these and then use it to stencil out your your own floor. Uh they also have kind of the same style as the Titan Vans DIY. So this is the uh, wall support channel. Cool. What else is on here before I go to our last one? All right, so Alpine Van Works. So this guy is on YouTube. You've probably seen him on Jared Tachi's videos being interviewed. And... Uh, that's how I found out about them. So they actually have uh, they have an interior panel kit. So let's just stick with a 144. Um, so they these, just, these are very simple drawings. I wish they had some uh, actual drawings. Okay, no actual drawings. But anyway, they have interior panels. They have different fabric colors. This is for a Sprinter. Uh, they have a flooring kit. Some wild, this is some wild colors. It's a pre-cut subfloor and flooring trim. 3,600. Uh, then they get a seating. So this is a seat like I have, the hide-and-go seat. So see how it flips up out of the way? So there are a couple of places you can buy this. Um, the hide and go seat Alpine Van Works has. If you go to Titan Vans, they have the uh, they have this style with the unwind seat locker style. Then they have these uh, fold away. So Titan Vans has a fold away. Alpine Vans has a fold away. And then Friedman Seating that I did a live stream on, they have a fold away. Now, each one of those, I think, is a, a different type of seat. I don't think they're from the same company. Um, and then they have cabinets. Well, those are soft cabinets. Okay. Okay. Not in love with the style, but it's options. Um, then accessories, what do we got? If you're into kind of carbon fiber, they got our carbon fiber table. Uh, some stuff bags. Then they got a slide out tray. Okay. All right. So as far as manufacturers and systems, full interior or just wall panel cabinets and accessories, we have these guys. All right. I'm going to move my head over here. So let's talk about 
uh, this section over here on the right. So this is my cheat sheet for you guys when you're purchasing this stuff. So think of this as like almost like a buyer's guide. Um, so what to look out for. It's obvious, but really, you know, what is included in the package? If you buy panels, you know, do the panels have cutouts? Um, you know, do the panels need like a reinforcement system, that type of thing? Uh, insulation, is that something that's included or not? And part of the price is also soundproofing. Soundproofing is something that definitely doesn't need to be overlooked. Uh, that low rumble kind of road noise. The soundproofing is what's going to uh, significantly reduce that. It's not necessarily going to make it go away. It's going to significantly reduce it. Uh, install hardware. Now, this one definitely affects the DIYer. So, for example, if you've never installed anything before, are you someone that's looking for more of an like IKEA type of toolkit to where when you buy something, it has the tools in it to assemble it? Or are you okay with having to purchase special tools in order to put it together? For example, the um, to make it, the Adventure Wagon kit included these crazy looking jigs. Do you see this right here? So what this did is you would open this up and you would put it in the channel of the top of the van and close it. And then you would take this and move it down to lock it in place. And they gave you two of these. So what they were meant to do is you would put them one at the back of the van and one at the front of the van. And this would hold the A-frame beam in place so that you could precisely rivet it where it needs to go. And when I mean precisely, precisely, you really can't even, I mean, a sixteenth of an inch off is probably okay, but an eighth of an inch off, you're really pushing it as far as how everything fits together. So having an installation hardware like this, uh, this would be considered a jig or a special tool. Um, a special tool would also be considered this. So this is a riv nut. So these are what was used to install uh, the adventure wagon kit. So imagine drilling holes out and taking these, screwing it onto this device, opening it up, putting it in the hole, riveting it down, and then unscrewing it. Uh, that is how that whole system is installed. So not only do you need jigs, know how to use them, but you need to also purchase special tools. They will provide you with these rivets, but they do not provide the tool to install it. Um, and not only that, this tool is like an Amazon tool. So this is like my backup tool. Uh, I purchased a, um, a drill attachment so I could get it done quicker. It's like a hydraulic drill attachment. So install hardware special tool, very important. Think about that. You know, if you're going to spend thousands of dollars on something, when you get it, are you going to be capable? Do you got the help around? And you got the tools to get it done. Um, vent fans. So some of these, I think one or two of these companies included a vent fan as part of the package. So Adventure Wagon includes one vent fan. You, if you wanted more, you could add it to your. Uh, you can. You can. They always want. You know. You can always add stuff to your order. <laughs> so if you want two fans, you can do that. If you want additional bags, beds, you know, whatever. But just the accessories. So let's just talk about Adventure Wagon. They included, you know, one vent fan for the one cutout. You get to select if it goes in the back of the van or the front. Um, and then you get to select, do you want an electrical kit or not? Uh, windows. So none of these included a window. Maybe flare space includes a flare with the window built into it. However, when you also think of windows, think of... Um, let's see. my slideshow there we go so when you think of windows uh, think of window bump outs or cut out window trim pieces that are upholstered 
Um, something like that. You know, I got my panels for my walls, but how am I going to trim that cutout for the window? Is there even a cutout that is, is there a, the panel, does the panel have a pre cutout window opening? Um, you know, think about that. Cabinets, you know, are cabinets included? Is there a system for if I wanted to get cabinets in the future, I could buy them and install them? Do I have room to buy them and install them? If I, depending on the particular kit that I get, uh, with the adventure wagon, you know, it's a system where in, later down the road you want to buy the hard or soft cabinet, you can. It's going to fit. Uh, kitchen galley. So not only does it does your kit you're buying include a kitchen galley, or does that kitchen galley have a room just for a fridge, or it does it have uh, room for a sink? Um, if it has a room for a sink, is there room below it? for gray water, freshwater gray water tank? And if so, how much? Five gallons each, seven gallons each? Um, does the fridge that fits in there, is that gonna suit your needs? Are you a weekender? Do you live in your van? Uh, electrical wiring. Uh, one of those companies had pre-routed out circuits to where you could embed the wire. Adventure Wagon has pre-wired kits that snap into the panels for you. Uh, structural frame and supports. You get the infantry wagon A frame. Um, Titan Vans has the track. I mean the uh, like that, you know, angled aluminum reinforcement. ABC rig had the angled reinforcement. Now infantry wagon gives you a ton of very precisely labeled boxes of bolts, nuts screws, uh, all kinds of stuff. I think there's like 20 boxes of stuff that comes with it. Um, so, you know, supports. You know, uh, well, this, this kind of counts. This is a support. And then um, install videos. Do they, got, do they have good photos? Do they have an instruction manual? Do they have really good install videos? I would say you need a really good install video. Um, it's kind of how this whole thing came about. You know, I like teaching people how to do things and I like doing high quality stuff. So I just kind of put those two and two together where it's like, if I'm going to work on it anyway, I might as well bring you guys along with me, teach you what I'm doing. Um, it also helps me kind of refine my thinking as far as, you know, uh, is this something I really wanted to do? Cause now I'm telling you guys about it, <laughs> but is there an install video available? Because especially if you're a first time DIYer, you know, if you're cutting a hole in the roof of your van, I mean, that is pretty, you know, anxiety inducing. If, if you've never done that before, you know, that's something you can't go back on. So if you had somebody, uh, like the video I made, you know, kind of walk you very detailed step by step by step by step, you can see the whole thing happen before you actually approach it. Videos are extremely uh, important. Next would be after the sale service. So when you buy it from this company, you know if you pick up the phone and call them, are they going to pick up or not? Um, and not only that, uh, there was a question that was asked in the chat earlier. Uh, what was it? Like buying individual pieces. Uh, can you buy individual pieces? Well. You know, if you have a number to call and have good communication, like Adventure Wagon, excellent communication. You know, I email them questions or give them a call. It's a bonus that I got to see them at the, the van show. But kind of knowing somebody's going to be around so that when you buy it, maybe a year later down the road, you have some way of uh, uh, falling back if you wanted to modify it or buy more parts. So after the sales service, you know, customer support number. Uh, if there's a way to get in touch, it is basically what I'm saying. Um, and for some reason, like uh, Shopify came up in my head. A lot of these, uh, I'm not against that at all, but a lot of the companies have Shopify. And something that I've noticed, and this might be a pro tip, but make sure that you already have uh, like an account set up 
before you purchase anything from any website. So before you hit that buy button, don't check out as a guest. Always create an account, you know, name, address. Get that account started because when you go and you order a product, let's just say you messed up on the billing address or, or whatever. What I've noticed is if you do the guest checkout, the paper trail or the, being able to go back and change something is it really difficult. Um, and then secondly, being able to, in this day and age, with shipping and all that stuff, having an account and making sure your tracking number is attached to the account and you can easily track your stuff to your door is extremely important. Um, I mean, you guys can imagine how much stuff I buy for the van. I mean, it's thousands of dollars. So if you have three things that you're managing tracking on, let's just say they're, you know, say it's the adventure wagon kit that's like $20,000 and then you got, uh, you know, glass from like C.R. Lawrence and stuff like that. Um, you know, make sure your accounts are set up before you purchase from these companies. Make sure you can get in touch with them. Make sure you can call, communicate. Uh, kind of la lay that groundwork first, then order your part. Um, it's going to make it much easier. Better peace of mind. Uh, then the last two, most important, quality of materials. You know, not ragging on Ikea, but you really don't want to use, like, you know, Ikea stuff for vans. Um, the reason I say that is you need materials such as, like, Baltic birch or uh, marine grade plywood. Uh, your van... It doesn't matter how much you ventilate it in and out. It, it the moist, the humidity and moisture is going to change dramatically throughout the seasons. Uh, if it's a rainy day, if it's a cold day, if it's a blistering hot day, um, you know you're really putting the work on that material inside your van. Things are going to warp, so you need to think ahead. You know if you're going to build that slatted ceiling. Um, uh, like the one I did for Thomas's van, each one of those in particular pieces of wood were trued, they were sanded, they were sealed, then they were stained, and they were double sealed. Uh, they were like their own little individual package being put up on the wall uh, or the ceiling because it's not good practice to just bolt everything in and then like paint over it because you're missing the whole backside of it where the moisture can enter the wood. Um, so if you don't buy good quality of materials, you put that in your van, it starts to warp. Um, just something to think about. So if you can buy a good quality first, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you out down the road. And then this is probably rare, but warranty. Uh, we saw one of those companies, they actually had the warranty on their website, um, like, Crafts, uh, workmanship or craftsmanship or something like that kind of warranty um, but definitely look for a warranty if you can I mean this stuff is expensive and once you put it in you know not only is it expensive but that time that you put in it you know if something happens it's very difficult to get back if at all but uh, yeah we are getting ready to end the stream guys so that means put any questions you have in the comments below I'm just going to change the uh i'm gonna go on the computer here really quick so i'm gonna change over my face but yeah i'm gonna let this stream go go for about two minutes so if you guys have a question put it in the chat remember it can be unrelated to anything we talked about today it could be questions on building tips tools water systems vent fans electrical uh i know i did the live stream on the electrical yesterday and uh I had a bunch of uh, scope creep on that. I kept, <laughs> I kept getting really detailed on on it. Uh, essentially, it was about how to turn a light bulb on in a van, but it got really detailed. Um, and I was kind of looking back on that stream, and for me, you know, an electrical system, I just know the foundation of it is so important. So even though you're turning one light bulb on. You're, you really need to get in the habit of laying the groundwork for all your future add-ons. Um, just got to 
make things much easier. But we'll probably redo that video when when we get a uh, another van here that's that's fresh and we're doing the electrical electrical system. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep the stream going here. For some reason, every time I end the stream, there's like three questions that come in and I cut the chat off. So I'm probably just gonna let the stream go here for a second, and I'm just gonna go through, clean my tabs up here. See if there's anything else I want to talk to you guys about. But yeah, ask away, guys. Yeah, you guys are very welcome at the overview. Um, again, this is stuff I look at every day, so I can really kind of dial in uh, on what might be a good fit for you. So, yeah, and also let me know if you are working on a build or you're kind of looking for someone to work your build. Oh, excellent question. Uh, what is my favorite way to build cabinets, um, wood frame or 8020? So, uh, so are you using wood frame? Is that something you want to do is use a wood frame for cabinets? So I'll tell you, I'll tell you about both. So Thomas's van that's going to come back in here. I've got three or four more panels and some just electrical stuff I need to tidy up and then his van will be done done. Um so, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you about his van in the AD20. Um, so his van, for example, uh, so he needs wheelchair accessibility in his van. So that means we use an AD20 core to the van because, one, we weren't going to put in an adventure wagon system. Two, I wanted it to be extremely safe. So I wanted that 80-20 structure to actually be grade 8 bolted into the chassis of the van. The last thing I want is a place that he can't bolt down his wheelchair, his paragolfer. Um, the other last thing I want is if for some reason there was you know an accident or something like that, I wanted that structure to be uh, you know automotive grade bolted into the chassis of the van so that if an impact happened, you know, the fridge isn't going anywhere. Things are not going anywhere. The other reason I use the 80-20 is uh, because of the design constraints we had with the Paragolfer, which is, uh, it's a really cool device. It's essentially a, it's almost like an off-road wheelchair that uh, allows you to stand up. You know, you can use it for playing golf or shooting sports, um, but it's pretty wide. So everything in the van was designed around that. Because of that, you have much, much lower room to build stuff. So since you have such a small, finite spot, space to build, everything has to be just like a quarter of inches. So if you need room and uh, if you need room and strength, 80-20 is the best way to go because you can get things really tight and then you can just, uh, I don't want to say decorate it, but you can finish it with like really thin panels. So thin uh, upholstered panels. Um, plus 80-20 gives you kind of like a rugged feel. Uh, so the other thing about 80-20 is, uh, yeah, safety is safety is a big thing with 80-20. Um, Let's see. Let me just. I like to, I like to hold up something while I'm talking about it. So this is kind of a an example of just how his whole entire van was built. You know, corner brackets, all eighty twenty brands. So this is all directly bought from the website. Don't go on Amazon. 
it's all metric equivalent and it is not 80 20 it trust me i tried to we were having a big sourcing issue um not a sourcing issue lead time issue so 80 20 was overwhelmed and things took weeks and weeks to to order to get stuff in um and things were things were showing up on my doorstep as the van pulled in my shop. I mean, it was <laughs> lead times are pretty crazy right now. Anyway, so these are all eighty twenty components, and it's it's hard to say if it's lighter than wood or equivalent to wood. I think it's about the same. Um, but if you're going for safety, you, you can't go wrong with eighty twenty. Um. Also, uh, so 80-20, what's cool is, so what I did is I would drill through here and I would through bolt. Um, let's see where I have that box. So this is a grade eight bolt. So if you, if you go to, if you go to Lowe's, actually every build is Home Depot, but if you go there, it says grade eight. So grade eight is an automotive grade bolt. It has to do with the properties of this bolt as far as, uh, it's sheer strength, and it's a bunch of stuff. But, like, tie-downs in your van and stuff are, are made to this standard. So what I did is, wherever, um, like, where the fridge was or where the power system was, um, I would take this, and I would drill through here, and then I could actually bolt this to the bottom of the van. So this would go down in here like that. And then this would actually be, this bolt would actually go through the, into the chassis of the van and be bolted with a washer up. So this is 15 series. So 15 series, 80-20 is an inch and a half. So the one five is inch and a half. Um, I would, after doing his van, uh, there are a lot of places I could have used 10 series, like uh, the kitchen galley and stuff like that. Um, but this, what's nice about this is, uh, I also have a carpentry background. So, you know, this is like an inch and a half by an inch and a half, which is like, you know, kind of like a, a two by two type of thing. So it's kind of, it's familiar. Um, I know the 10 series would probably be strong enough, but for some reason it just, this makes me feel more confident in what I'm using it for. Because I'm using it for like the whole entire battery system. I'm using it for his Murphy bed system. Um, I'll, I'll probably tell you another reason. So I used to work at Bosch, which is the German company. And all of our assembly lines were made out of 8020. So I, I kind of know like what the whole manufacturing system looks like for this. And so when I put it in a van, it's just in the back of my head, I kind of know the hinges and the latches and uh, all that type of stuff. So I'm kind of comfortable with it. Anyway, try to make a long story short. This is 15 series. We use these brackets. Um, I only used button head and lock washers. I use Loctite in a couple places, but some people say it'll loosen over time. Um, I don't agree with that because whenever I had to, after I torqued this down, Whenever I had to remove this, it was extremely hard to back out this screw with the lock washer on there. It actually, when it goes in, it actually kind of cuts into the aluminum. So if you can imagine when you try to unscrew it, it's kind of cut in there. And so it actually locks itself in even deeper. So it's a, it's a very tight fit. But I know I'm getting ahead of myself here. 8020 is good. I'm not saying wood is bad. You, you just got to, if you're going to, build with wood you're gonna to have to do it like i did my personal van and you got to think ahead to where 
if you were in an accident, where do you think the energy is going? Where are your components going? And if you build it in a way to where you think it's going to hold, then, you know, wood, wood's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that could be a joke, you know. I don't know. That, that's probably a good way to, to say why you shouldn't use wood, is kind of going with it. But I don't know. I've had, you know, a long time ago I built my van out of wood. It's been safe. Um, I've made it as safe as I possibly could. Um, but now you can use wood for like the bed systems or your cabinets, like your upper cabinets and stuff like that. Because, I mean, if you're more familiar with stuff like that, you can build that stuff out of wood. Where I'm coming from is build your cabinets out of wood, build your kitchen galley out of wood, just like normal, like kitchen car- cabinet cabinetry carpentry right all i would do is get some really nice hardware to attach it to the van so if you're going to go the wood option understand how you're going to attach it with 80 20 it's kind of inherent into the design to where you drill a hole through and you bolt it down it's like adult legos kind of um see so you're doing a ford transit extended yeah, uh, I kind of wish this one wasn't extended because, you know, I want to do the full shower in it. I want to do the full-size bed. And then I also want to do dual passengers in the rear. And everything is so tight. Everything is, yeah. Yeah, so 80-20. Um, and make sure you go to 8020.net. That is their... Uh, official website they do sell it on amazon i would not buy it on amazon it has to do with shipping lead time like the way they do their ordering system um so just go to 8020.net you know you can go up to the search bar and type in 15 um it'll pull up category 15 series uh and then you can kind of, uh, well, let's see, AXT. Yeah, so 15, and you can get you can get uh, smooth surface. You can get this textured surface. Um, I'll tell you one more thing. Hopefully we get another question in here. I'm, I'm going to let the stream keep on going. So when you get really fancy and you want to build those like really sleek 80-20 fronts for like a kitchen galley like we did for Thomas's, you have the channeled ones, but then right here, check that out. It's flat. It's flat and smooth. It's got a smooth face. So you can take this uh, uh, this smooth face and just put like the door on the inside. You don't have to have the door covering it. Oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, Travel Nurse, that's awesome. I mean, you know, the whole camper van, van life thing, I mean, that that has suited a lot of Travel Nurses really well because you guys are always mobile. You know, it's nice to have a place that, you know, kind of feels like home, but you can still get up and go wherever you need to go. Um, uh, I would say uh, the only caveat to using... 80 20 is that um, you have to be extremely precise. Uh, like, don't get that, let you get, get you down or anything, but remember, it's expensive. So, when you make that cut, make sure you've already kind of mapped out what you're going to do. Um, I've actually used wood. You know, I've actually used uh, like one by twos and I've kind of framed out my idea. Um, like using cardboard and wood and stuff. If you guys have ever watched Humble Road, he does a lot of mock-ups in his van, so you can kind of you can kind of fill the space out before you start building. And that's very that's a that's very good to do with eighty twenty. Um,
So this is kind of funny, guys, but you might have this as entertainment. So this tray right here, this is this is the only offcuts I've ever had from Thomas's van. I've been able to use everything else in his van. So this is the only stuff that actually didn't didn't make it. Um, and I kind of use it as a reminder to, you know, measure three times, cut once. Uh, but yeah, definitely, um, here, I'll get some, yeah, yeah, I like interacting with you guys, so definitely keep answering these questions, this is perfect. Uh, so for example, when I did this other live stream, uh, so this one had to do with the lithium battery setup. So this might be a fun one to watch um, because I'm actually sh I'm showing you in this video. Man, my head is so big. Hold on. So you guys can kind of see how I uh, attached it. Hold on a second. So you can kind of see the the beginnings of the 8020. So where you have a um so where you have you know like this main channel on the back side. So that was the first one that I bolted in and I used the same procedure as the adventure wagon. So I take these riv nuts and I put them in the wall of the van. And then what I do is I cut a hole in here and I Put a bolt in it, and I bolt it to uh, the back of the van. So this this back here, this becomes my reference. Um, and again, definitely go check out Humble Road because he kind of gives the uh, theory behind behind all the stuff I'm saying. Where you know, there's really no place to reference in a van, you know. There's, there's not like center lines or it's not like building a house where you have like studs around 16 inch centers, you know, and it's just kind of a, it's just kind of something that everyone knows in a van, you got to make your, uh, you know, in the engineering world, we call it like the datum point. It's, it's the point where you're going to start me measuring off of and from, um, yeah. So you kind of start with one place and then you just start, you, you just branch out. You just kind of grow from that piece of 80-20 and just step by step by step, you'll build your battery box, you'll build your kitchen galley, your bed. Um, and just take your time. Oh, but definitely get your interior in, your floor, ceiling, then do your 80-20. Uh, EcoFlow EcoFlow 10-10 I don't know. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. So EcoFlow, we got man, that's pretty nice. That is pretty nice. So I'm not sure that I would directly I could be wrong, but I don't know if I would directly go. Let's see, what is this? This is, I just heard about this probably a couple weeks ago. Okay, so my gut, by just thinking about this, um, these numbers are really high. So like 4,800 watts of solar, you're really going to only be able to fit maybe like a thousand watts on your roof of your van if you're not, you don't have like an air conditioner and stuff like that. So having a capacity of 4,800, um, again, take this with a grain of salt, might be kind of wasteful. And a thousand watt alternator, um, hmm. 
Three thousand watt shore power. Okay, that's that's about right. Like a three thousand watt inverter. Um. So I wouldn't. Cons. I know they're showing this to be put in a van. But these numbers are really for like a you know off grid like mini cabin type of thing. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy to uh Yeah, we could definitely we could turn this into a whole new stream. This is this is good you brought that up. Um Can I ask where you found out about the EcoFlow? Like if did somebody suggest it to you or was it just something you kind of found out on your own? All right, so get back with me on that answer. Go and do. Uh, I'm going to, so when you get that answer, just put that in the chat. I'm going to go to John here really quick. So John just got his 2023 Ford Transit high roof. Um, John, I'm very excited that you got it. I know a lot of people right now, it's very difficult to get their vans. They've been waiting forever. Um, so in the place where I'm going to put the fan, I noticed a box that looks like a location for the electrical to the fan. Would the location be a power supply? Um, so the 2023, did it have a like an upfitter package? Or did you actually buy the one that has the... Uh, it's got like a... They call it like a van like a van life upgrade or something like that? Is that what you're talking about? Because I don't know of a of a box. Any van that I've worked on doesn't have a power supply for the fan. You kind of have to wire that in your, yourself. So I'm going to search this really quick. Because I know they've been adding a bunch of stuff to these vans. Um, I'm not sure about that question. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little homework on the EcoFlow. I know people really liked it because it was it was yeah, it was a plug and play system. So they have a ten, let's see. They get a five. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Let's see here. That's right. Yeah, I've seen this video where they... <coughs> Yeah, I see it here with they <clears throat> Can't bear it.
Yeah, I would say <clears throat> I'm trying to see where you would actually <clears throat> put that in the van. <coughs> Man, I got some in my throat. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, EcoFlow. I'm going to have to uh, check on that one. Oh, it's a 48-volt system. Okay. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's check out John's question really quick. Dealership doesn't know what the box is does does not show the schematics hmm so john there's there's two ways you could look at this uh so the first way to look at it is um <clears throat> If you need, is what what's the use of your van going to be? If it's if it's for building out as a camper van, you may just want to consider that, uh, you know, that's going to be part of your main core van system. <clears throat> so you wouldn't actually be hooking up to your uh, car battery or your van battery. It'd be your it'd be your. Uh, Secondary battery system. <clears throat> typically, typically, when you're building a van, you want you want all that power that the van's going to use um, used in a separate system. So that'd be your, uh, you know, leisure battery. I think is what the technical term is it for it. So your car battery, the battery that is for starting the engine, you really don't want to use any device. You The devices inside your van, you want to use on your secondary system as much as possible to not run down your main starter battery for your engine. <clears throat> and so even though there may be a power box to supply it, it might be easier, one, troubleshooting-wise, but two, uh, you know, wire that to your you know, your big battery bank, like your lithium iron bat, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Yeah. So, John, my question would be, you know, what's your use for it? Yeah. Let me know what that is. <clears throat> hmm. And you're talking about the roof fan, right? <laughs> Like the rear, uh, <clears throat> the rear roof vent.
Yeah, so doing a little bit of research on that uh, all-in-one power systems, that might be good for a, a future live stream because I know these these are coming out. Um, <clears throat> I believe this is a 48-volt system. And so... Um, I guess the only thing I'd have to say about these systems is when you do a system like this, uh, this is for go and do, when you do a system like this, just remember in the future when you're going down the road, if some component fails, you know, it's it's going to be your entire system and it might not be readily available to buy something on Amazon. So say, for example, the solar charge controller in this unit messed up. <clears throat> Instead of just that one unit mess it up on the system, it might be integrated in so much that the cell whole system won't work if something happened. So usually why a lot of people, um, so even though this company is showing, uh, where's that Where's that video, right here? Even though this company is showing how you have a mess of stuff on the left and it simplifies it, the mess of stuff is also redundancy. So, for example, you may ha you could have like two solar controller boxes, and if one went out, you would still be able to charge via solar. Um, it's really just kind of how you want to approach it on a reliability level. Um, so this EcoFlow might be nice, like all in one unit, but because it's on one, if a certain part of it breaks, can you still charge your system? That's what I, that's the only apprehension I'd have. Yeah, I mean if uh let's see of the light bar. Yeah, it sounds like uh the box aft of the light bar. Box is one frame aft of the light bar. So I'm trying to think where you're explaining the location of it from. So I don't think it's the uh, like the satellite radio antenna. The satellite radio antenna wiring looks like power wires, but it's not. And that box is located behind the driver's seat and above the head, above your head. Um, so where the the front of the van, kind of the, when the roof begins to roll back as soon as it planes out um that is the uh satellite radio antenna box so i'm not sure if that's what you're talking about but if it's at the very rear of the van between the two ribs that allow for a vent fan to be put in it's probably probably power for a vent fan i guess
So, John, are you building this van for <clears throat> camping, kind of going outdoors? Are you eventually going to build the van out? Or is it more for just, like, you know, transporting stuff? Yeah, pretty much anything you want. Okay. Yeah, so if you're using it for uh, like a full build-out, then <clears throat> I would go ahead and start the process of thinking about kind of getting your base power system created. So what you would do is just, you know, think of all the potential uh, items you're going to have. You know, are you going to run a 12-volt refrigerator? You're obviously going to run a vent fan, uh, now, vent fan uses very little power, so I mean, you, you're not gonna even if you get a nice fridge, vent fan, it's still very little power draw. Um, it can actually be, you know, up to zero if you have adequate solar on the roof. So you can just uh, you know start simple, but start putting your numbers together. So you know, find out how much you know current the like a max fan is pulling, you know, it might be like three, five amps or something like that. Then you got a fridge. It might be, you know, eight amps. Um, and then let's say that you have, you know, some lighting in the van, um, that sort of thing. Oh, directly in line with the side door. The second frame past the seat. Having two small windows installed on each side, on one on each side. Um, yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Um, now, my question on the windows would be, you know, can they be ventilated or are they solid glass? Yeah, it is it is kind of coincidental that it's 14 inches. It's almost like they planned it, right? <laughs> yeah, everyone I've in, installed on Fords, they uh it is very funny that it's exactly wide enough perfect place for a for a vent fan. Yeah, but I would say if you're um if you are getting glass, uh it's nice to have that glass be able to vent. So, like, the van behind me. So like the van behind me, <clears throat> I'm just going to drive over here. Yeah, so that one behind me here, uh, you can see that it, it vents right here on the side. 
So, so I like those because you can get you can get that uh, air to come through. Um, I'm assuming you're going to getting a vent vent venting window or a window that's able to be vented. Um, because you got to have some way of pulling that air through the van. Is it you actually you won't be able to pull it through the uh, like the regular vents of the van. Hey guys. All right, we're going to do the stream for about three more minutes. We're going to knock off here in three more minutes. So maybe pop in one more question. And uh, yeah, so, so go and do. And also, John, if uh, I do this live stream every night of the week. So if you guys have a question, you know, hop on around. 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And, uh, yeah, you can hop right in. So it doesn't really matter what I'm doing on the live stream. I usually have a little agenda going. So I'll have a uh, a form like this where I'm going through a topic that I've gone through. But then as far as everything else goes, I'm, I'm really just, uh, you know, here to answer questions and see what you guys are looking to get answered let's see box it by itself ends with nothing coming out of it just two power supplies going in one red and one black line hmm. I mean it, it could be it could just be a 12 volt supply for you know just some type of accessory in the back it's coming straight from the house battery um, but just just as a as a builder, uh, I like to have stuff kind of segregated so that, you know, I'm not troubleshooting car, engine, battery, electronics. You know, I, I want stuff that, if I'm troubleshooting stuff that I've installed, it's on a system that I put together so I can really easily find out what the issue is. And I also know that I'm not kind of robbing power from the engine batteries. <clears throat> the good thing is you got the the dual it looks sounds like you got the dual battery system which is awesome because it's real this one's got the dual battery system and you know I've left the lights on and stuff like that and it it's really good insurance because it takes a long time for those batteries to die. All right guys, well yeah, thanks so much for staying this long into the stream. Um, I hope that this uh, camper van D conversion DIY kits, these are links and stuff, helps you guys out a ton. Um, you know, definitely reach out to me this week. So, you know, we got the live stream going uh, till Friday, about 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, come in with all your questions, comments. And uh, if you have any questions for me uh, personally, as far as van building goes, you can go to Odyssey Custom Vans. It's Odyssey Custom Vans. So this is my van building business. Uh, you can contact me here. Put a message in here. I'd be happy to get back with you. Um, as far as doing a custom build for you. And then getting back to the Van Builder HQ, this is where we get you guys nice content on building all kinds of stuff, van-related DIY um, and stuff like that. So I'm going to hop in here really quick. Let's see what else you guys got. Yep, you guys are very welcome. Um, let's see what John said. Yep. Yep, always been able to uh, keep that system separate. It's going to help you if you uh, <laughs> if your van battery uh, or the battery pound your nice to haves. You know, refrigerator and stuff goes dead. You're not going to be stranded. 
Um, yeah, yeah. Look forward to uh, chatting you about um, chatting to you about the uh, travel camper van build. You know, you can tune in here. We'll be doing all kinds of topics uh, throughout the week, and uh, it's always like a new thing. But for example, you know, you guys have questions like that EcoFlow. You know, that might be something I do a stream about. Get into more detail. Um, you know, John, any questions on uh, kind of getting that journey started about building your van are always good topics for the live stream. So, yeah, prep those questions this week. Come into the chat um, later uh, tomorrow. It'll be perfect. And, yeah, like I said, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is usually when I kick it off. Uh, seems to be a good time for everybody. But, once again, thank you guys so much for joining the live stream, and uh, we will see you tomorrow.